Within a month after President Bush declared victory on May 1, 2003, the liberated Iraqis repaid the Americans with attacks on their convoys. The attacks began as simple harassment with small arms, rockets, and improvised explosive devices, more commonly referred to as IEDs. In a war without any front, American truck drivers, like their Vietnam War predecessors, became frontline soldiers. Upon realization that it would take several years to establish peace in Iraq, the U.S. Army began a series of one-year unit rotations, known as one-year boots on the ground. The replacement of OIF-1 units began in January 2003 and continued through April 2004. The truck units arriving for the second rotation would experience the worst convoy ambushes and suffer the most casualties of any truck companies during the entire war. This second year of the war also provided the greatest experimentation in gun truck design and escort doctrine that set the standard for following units. The most dangerous area in Iraq for attacks was the infamous Sunni Triangle around Baghdad. The 1544th Light Medium Truck Company, a National Guard unit, was predominantly made up of college students from Illinois. It moved to its new home at Camp Sites, just south of Baghdad on March 16th, and the next day suffered its first casualties. Two soldiers wounded and Sergeant Ivory L. Phipps killed by a mortar attack while walking back from Chow. Mortar attacks were so common that some camps like Anaconda, just north of Baghdad, became known as Mortaritaville. But truck convoys would face their greatest challenge during Easter weekend. On April 5th, the radical young cleric Muqtada al-Sadr unleashed a jihad against the coalition forces in an effort to establish his stand among the elder clerics. Al-Sadr needed control of three towns. He already operated out of the town of an najaf and his followers drove off the Ukrainians from their compound at Al-Qud. All that stood between him and Sadr City, the town named after his father, was the 1st Cavalry Division. While his militia were no match for Abrams' tanks, they knew the soft Achilles heel of the tanks was their dependency on trucks for fuel and ammunition. On Thursday night, April 8th, they dropped eight bridges and overpasses around the convoy support center Scania, thus cutting Baghdad off from resupply from the south. That same day, three convoys of the 1544th were ambushed, resulting in four wounded, which included their company commander. Combat units would have to pull supplies from the remaining stocks in the north. The next day was Good Friday, and the anniversary of the fall of Baghdad. On that day, the militia ambushed any convoy that tried to get in or out of Baghdad International Airport, from which the 1st Cavalry drew its supplies. The 724th POL, an Army Reserve unit from Bentonville, Illinois, ran through a kill zone that stretched from four to five miles. Eight KBR drivers were killed, one captured and later escaped. Two American drivers were also killed, and PFC Matt Malpin was captured and is still missing in action. The heroic actions of PFC Jeremy Church earned him the first Silver Star Medal awarded in this war to a truck driver and an Army Reserve soldier. The next day, all convoys were shut down, except for emergency convoys with high-priority cargo. The 1st Cavalry only had a few days of supply left. With Baghdad International Airport, better known as Biop, cut off from the south and the roads closed to convoys, the enemy's next target was the several hundred trucks parked behind the south wall at Biop. At noon on Easter Sunday, the enemy assaulted the wall that stood between them and the truck drivers and their dining facility. To the enemy's surprise, a handful of truck drivers stopped their determined attack and prevented them from breaching the cinder block wall in a battle that lasted over 40 minutes. About a dozen truck drivers prevented the enemy from destroying several hundred trucks and killing their drivers. For leading the defense of the wall and escorting convoys through four ambushes that weekend, former 2nd Lieutenant James McCormick from the 1487th Medium Truck Company, a National Guard unit from Eaton, Ohio, has been recommended for the Distinguished Service Cross. 
After that, the cavalry began taking back the roads, but the April uprising would not run its course until the end of the month. The drivers had prevailed, but the battle for the roads was not over. For the rest of 2004, Iraqi insurgents would challenge the truck drivers for control of the road. In response, the truck companies built gun trucks out of sheets of hardened steel and armed them with varying types of crew-served weapons. The design of the armor matched the imagination of the crews and mechanics, forming a happy marriage between the Transportation Corps and the Ordnance Corps. Although the hillbilly armor provided far less protection than the add-on armor kits and factory up-armored Humvees and ASVs that were trickling in, the gun truck crews showed greater aggressiveness in ambushes to include dismounting and engaging the enemy. A number of gun truck units were created in response to the increased attacks. The 7th Transportation Battalion at Anaconda provided the standard for escort doctrine, with a 1 to 4 ratio of gun truck to task vehicle and convoys that could not exceed 30 vehicles. Kuwait-based convoys provided a 1 to 10 ratio. While some truck companies kept internal gun trucks, many battalions designated or created gun truck companies. The 375th Transportation Group, an Army Reserve unit from Mobile, Alabama, formed the 518th Provisional Gun Truck Company, and the Army borrowed three truck companies from the U.S. Air Force, which were assigned to the gun truck mission in Iraq. It was during this time the enemy and the truck drivers sparred with each other to evolve their respective tactics. Some aggressive units, like the 518th Combat Gun Truck Company, wanted to deter further enemy attacks. Many of the gun truck companies, like the 1544th, focused on defending the convoys and getting vehicles to clear the kill zone. Although the April uprising was followed by an apparent lull in complex ambushes, the enemy continued to harass the convoys searching for weaknesses. Casualties continued to mount, and on May 23rd, the 1544th lost Specialist Jeremy L. Ridlin, killed by an IED near Fallujah. His twin brother was also serving with him in the same company. There it goes. Although many companies suffered wounded, most companies would not have anyone killed, and some might lose one or two. But three companies took a beating, after the Good Friday ambush, the 724th POL never lost another soldier killed, but its sister unit at Anaconda, the 660th POL, an Army Reserve unit from Cadiz, Ohio, lost a total of four drivers killed during their rotation. Camp sites suffered approximately 400 mortar attacks, and September 5th proved to be a black day in the history of the 1544th. On that day, Six mortar rounds landed in the area of the barracks, wounding 16 soldiers and killing two, Sergeant Shauna Morrison and Specialist Charles Lamb. That brought their death toll up to four soldiers killed, equal to the 660th. On the night of October 6th, the 1544th lost their fifth driver. Specialist Jessica S. Calvey was killed and two others were wounded by an IED that caused their gun truck to roll over. After one year in Iraq, the 1544th had lost more truck drivers than any other truck company during the war. Five soldiers killed and 34 wounded, nearly one quarter of their assigned strength, and had gone through three company commanders, yet they continued to roll, mostly escorting and delivering the mail. Their perseverance would make the U.S. Postal Service proud as they let nothing keep them from getting through. As coalition offensives increased in the fall, the enemy increased their attacks on convoys, but the gun trucks were ready. On October 18th, the enemy initiated an ambush on a halted convoy, but the quick response by three gun trucks of the 518th Gun Truck Company silenced the enemy weapons in less than three minutes, with not one casualty on their part. Throughout the latter part of 2004, the truck companies received the latest M1114 up-armored Humvees and factory-built cab armor kits began to arrive in theater, improving the survivability of the drivers. By March 2005, most of the OIF-2 units had left,
and the enemy hoped to take advantage of the new units. On the anniversary of the beginning of the ground war and Palm Sunday, an enemy force of approximately 50 Iraqis launched a large-scale ambush with hopes of capturing drivers like they had during the Good Friday ambush the previous year. The enemy mistakenly let two convoys, escorted by the 623rd Field Artillery from the Kentucky National Guard and the 518th, enter their kill zone, doubling the number of gun trucks from three to six. And unknown to them, one of the convoys was shadowed by a patrol of three Humvee gun trucks from the 617th MP Company, another Kentucky National Guard unit. After 40 minutes of fighting, the Iraqis lost nearly all their number, killed, wounded, or captured, with not one American soldier killed. Two MP soldiers, Specialist Jason Mike and Sergeant Leanne Hester, were decorated with the Silver Star Medals, and their squad leader, Staff Sergeant Timothy Nine, earned the Distinguished Service Cross. Sergeant Hester was the first woman to earn the Silver Star since World War II. The Palm Sunday ambush of 2005 inflicted a mighty blow to the Iraqi insurgents, shifting the tide of the road war in favor of the gun trucks. Units like the 1544th were a testament to the performance of the National Guard and Army Reserve, who comprised the majority of the truck units in the war during 2004. That year, from April 2004 to March 2005, proved to be the worst period of fighting between truck drivers and insurgents, with the truck drivers owning the road. Only for a few days in April did the enemy shut down the roads, but no combat unit went without fuel or ammunition. The truck drivers of Iraq had measured up to the challenge, as their predecessors had during the Vietnam War, and delivered the goods. The ambushes of OIF-2 set the standard for convoy doctrine that has continued to evolve.